has it kind of sunk in yet how well Saturday went? I and I, I don't want to downplay it because it was it was such a good effort. Um, but I we expected to win. You know, going into that weekend, we expected to win a game and hoping to win on Friday and play with a little house money on Saturday. Um, obviously, that wasn't the case. I would have liked to play that game on Friday without the five. Uh, I thought our energy was good. And, you know, it really came down to, you know, probably the play of Nolan. And, and Nolan, he played outstanding, but he, he, we talk about this a lot as, as, um, as a team, you know, in that position in particular. You can give up two goals a ton of different ways. Um, and some of those ways you're gonna win. Some of those ways you're gonna lose. And you know, lots of times the the deciding factor becomes who gives up the first one. And you know, the first probably four or five minutes of the, of Saturday, um, they didn't have a lot of scoring chances, but they were they were in our end. And you know, they had about five or six shots. And um, the toughness Nolan showed after being pulled the night before, um, I think that was a, a a true testament to to where he's at and where he's come. Um, I did apologize to him on Saturday um, for taking him out of the game. When when you the vantage point from the bench, when you see pucks go in the middle of the net, you think your goalie doesn't see it, and he's and he's not seen it that night. He doesn't have it. Um, we do have a different vantage point from behind the net, which is a camera that he couldn't see either. So, you know, for him to get pulled, I didn't talk to him about that until Saturday morning. So he had to go through the rest of the game Friday had to sleep on it Friday night, come to the rink Saturday and have no idea he was playing until 11.45. Um, that's a lot of growth and maturity. In him. I don't want to take anything away from Nolan, but you see guys like Van Noonan and Newhouse step up and really show off your depth. Is that how good your team can be when some of those role players start playing like that? I think so. I think the biggest probably thing for us has been consistency. Um, only played one real poor game, um, but it's it's you know eighty five percent or ninety percent versus hundred percent from everybody all in. Whether it's the first shift of the game and Vinny Demay blocking a shot and you know losing feeling in his hand for almost the whole period and continuing to play, to uh, Van Noonan's first goal and Newhouse scoring to the end of the second period and, and they kind of had it going on us a little bit and we had the Volton line out there against their top players. Uh, Rio Remco and, and Vesio, and they had gone through a, a line change. So they start with one line, they kind of had it in our end for about 45 seconds, and then they change, and out come their big guns. And usually that's a recipe for a scoring chance against or a goal, or um, because a lot of factors fall into that. You know, you, you break people down through fatigue and through execution, and, and when you're already fatigued, and now the guys that can really execute come on the rink. Um, they didn't get a chance. And, you know, Luke and, and Ryland and some of those guys really gutted it out to, to extend that uh, puck over the blue line so we could get a change. Um, you know, to, to the third period, giving up five shots. You know, that they've done, you know, in 54 periods of play, they've given up five or less four times, or had five or less four times. So, you know, a lot of those were not, none of those were in the third period. They were all in the first. So, you know that compounds that even more when they're when they're behind. So, yes, it does. Um, you know, with the addition of a couple players and and getting healthy is going to help. You know, and um, we've played the last four games with ten healthy forwards, and you know to gut that out against them um, does show you where you can go. Leaves you in a good taste in the first half, and now hopefully we can get healthy and have some options for lines and deep pairs and power plays and, and things like that. Then Uremko with what he was able to do, blocking shots, sacrificing the body. I know it wasn't just him, but unselfish hockey for your guys. Big time, you know, big time. And, and, and they're proud guys. And, and on Saturday, um, you know, when, when I show the video on Saturday, I show a recap of the game. I don't show, you know, the, I shouldn't say that. I, I at first show adjustments we're going to make, uh, areas where I think that we can do some things that will help our chances to win, and then I show a recap. And players are proud. 
and when they see themselves and um, you know and, and again it's not like they're not trying but there's a big difference between 95% and 100% and that's first two steps that's 50-50 battle that's you know at a time where maybe you got 30% to win the puck and, and you do and then you know you see yourself on that on that video and the reaction and the way that we responded you know says a lot about our team and um, we've done that this year we've responded every time that I've challenged them um, you know now the key for us is going to be how do you play on Friday without me having to challenge you Saturday morning you know we got to be able to play Friday to, to you know be able to string some games together again where and all of a sudden you build momentum and you win two in a row, three in a row, all of a sudden you're at five and you know, and you're putting money in the bank. What's the plan for break now? You got about three weeks off? Guys are guys were released on uh, Saturday after the game. So lots of guys went home uh, Sunday, Monday. They'll return the twenty sixth. We'll practice twenty six, twenty seven. Um, our opponent does play a game the Monday that we play them. So I have to really think about that. You know, how are we going to get our body body armor up and um, get our anger sufficiently high? Because theirs will be after playing a game. Um, you know, they might have to do a couple different things in practice than we've done typically. Um, but hopefully, this win. You know, you go home and you know what you're going to hear at home is great job. You know, you beat the number one team in the country. They only lost once before you played them. Um, you know, all positive things. So hopefully that you know, gives them a jump in their step. And, and when you mentally feel good about where you're at, your mind's a powerful thing and, and you can push a little harder. And that allows me to coach harder. And, and hopefully that's the case. What's the locker room like now as compared to before Saturday night? I would say, you know, as much as before Saturday night, we, we had some, we had some tough things happen. Um, and we played a couple games that you play that game a hundred times, you're going to win it 95 of them. And we were on the losing end of a couple of those. And, um, you know, the, the gut shot to, to Huntsville where we, we played poorly. And, um, you know, all those things affect your psyche. You know, finishing the year on, on a high note and, you know, the difference between winning that game versus tying that game or losing that game uh, is monumental because it's, you don't get to play this weekend. You don't get to practice Monday you're off for 10 days and what you remember is the last thing you did and you know, hopefully that gives us a little bit of extra pep. Let me jump back to block shots. I know it's a stat that gets overlooked. Is that the highest you've had since you've been here? It's close. Um, you know, sometimes, and you're right, sometimes that number can be deceiving because if you have the puck a lot, you're not going to block a lot of shots. Um, in, in, that, in that game, I think the number was sufficiently high, but the time and the situation and the effort to block them, that was sky high. And, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm in the lane, I just get hit by it. It was, I got to adjust myself, I got to sacrifice my body where it's not hitting me in the shin pad, it's hitting me where I don't have any pad, whether it's the ribs, whether it's the forearm, um, wherever it is. And we all know those hurt, and there's no getting around it. It's going to hurt, and it's going to hurt bad. And you know that that you're right on was that that was 100% uh, commitment by our team that I don't care where it hits me, I'm just not letting it get by me. And you know that's that's what good teams do. They do whatever it takes to give yourself the best chance to win. And sometimes that is blocking a shot when you know it's really going to hurt. Thanks, Grant. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys.